Hey, this is Sonny in plain English. Okay, so nowadays you can buy a new device like a smartphone and it will be advertised as having a certain amount of memory like 16, 32, 64 gigabytes and so on. However, the actual amount of memory in the device never appears to be the same as what is advertised. And the higher the advertised amount of memory, the wider the gap becomes between the advertised amount and the actual amount. Now, some of you might just be used to this and assume that the advertised amount is never going to be the same as what you actually receive. But why is this? Why is it that you could go and buy a brand new smartphone right now and on the box it will say that there is 64 gigabytes of memory, but then in the software on the phone it will say that there's only about 58 or 59 gigabytes of onboard memory. That's five gigabytes of discrepancy. And by the way, those five gigabytes uh, are not taken up by the software already on the phone and other bits of metadata. That comes out of the 58 to 59 gigabytes of onboard memory. Now, some companies will put some sort of fine print somewhere acknowledging that a discrepancy exists. And they may even go into some detail as to why it exists. But wouldn't it just make sense for those companies to advertise the actual amount to begin with? Well, to explain the reasoning behind this, we need to first better understand the dimensions or measurements of digital memory. So taking our brand new 64 gigabyte smartphone, let's analyze those measurements. Okay, so we've got 64 gigabytes of memory, but what is a gigabyte made up of? A gigabyte is made up of 1000 megabytes. And what is a megabyte made up of? 1000 kilobytes. What's a kilobyte? 1000 bytes. So far, this probably feels similar to the decimal measurements that we have in the metric system with things such as uh, milligrams, grams, kilograms, and so on. So if we continued, we could guess that maybe just like how a thousand micrograms make one milligram, a thousand something make one byte. Now, that would be a sensible guess, but unfortunately, this is not the way it works. The equivalent of what a microgram is to a milligram is called a bit. However, unlike how 1000 micrograms make up one milligram, eight bits make one byte. But why is this? And what is a bit? And why do we need eight of them to make one byte? A bit, short for binary digit, is the smallest increment of data on a computer. Just like how in the binary system, we only have two unique values, zero and one, a bit can hold only one of two values. These values, zero and one, correspond to the electrical values of off and on, respectively. Historically, a byte or eight bits was the number of bits used to encode a single character of text in a computer system. And for this reason it is the smallest addressable unit of memory in many computer architectures. This creates a conundrum because if computers count in binary, but humans count in decimal and humans and computers are expected to communicate with one another via software and hardware, one of us needs to bend to the other in order to achieve some form of consistency. It's just like how if you lived in the US and you took a trip to France, um, you may have taken some dollars with you, but ultimately they were converted into euros. In this case, the US currency bends to its European counterpart, which in turn achieves some form of consistency. However, when it comes to how computers and humans count memory, this conversion frustratingly hasn't happened or, or rather has happened, but not in the way that it should. In the field of computer science during the 70s and 80s, a kilobyte typically meant 1024 bytes. But when referring to disk drive storage, a kilobyte meant 1000 bytes. Therefore, it's not uncommon to see and hear a kilobyte being referred to as both 1000 bytes and 1024 bytes. One definition bends to humans, another to computers. Now it clearly cannot be both things at once. If we had just accepted from the beginning that one kilobyte was 1000 and... Oh, kick that so. If we had just accepted that from the beginning, that one kilobyte meant 1024 bytes, we would have bent to the conventions of the computer. However, when it came to memory, hard drive manufacturers opted for the more human readable format of decimal. So just like how we know that a kilogram is 1000 grams, 
a kilobyte came to be known as 1000 bytes. However, in reality, it was 1024 bytes. Okay, now the difference between 1000 bytes and 1024 bytes is relatively small. Therefore, the ambiguity is not impactful. However, as we increase those measurements from kilobytes to megabytes and megabytes to gigabytes, so does the discrepancy. As an aside, there was actually a movement to try and better differentiate between a decimal kilobyte and a binary kilobyte. In 1995, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry's Interdivisional Committee on Nomenclature and Symbols tried to address this imbalance. They proposed new prefixes that would be known as Kibi, Mebi, and Gibi, and so on for powers of 1024. This introduced new measurements known as kibibyte, mebibyte, gibibyte, and so on. The idea was that these new units of measurements were basically short for saying binary kilobyte, binary megabyte, whereas the decimal versions would continue to be known as kilobyte, megabyte, and gigabyte, and so on. Now, these new prefixes were created and they still exist today. However, their actual usage is uncommon. And because of that, we're still left today with both the binary and decimal versions, both just being interpreted as the with the decimal names. So a binary kilobyte and a decibel kilobyte just get known as kilobytes rather than kilobytes and kibibytes. Doesn't that mean that we should actually have more memory in our phones than what's advertised? How did we actually end up with less? Like, shouldn't I be able to check the memory of a brand new computer that's being advertised as having one terabyte and see that it actually has more memory? Or better yet, shouldn't my 64 gigabyte smartphone actually have 68.7 gigabytes of memory? Now, as we mentioned earlier, hardware manufacturers use the decimal system for counting. However, what is sold to you is one gigabyte is actually the equivalent of one gigabyte. It's kind of like buying $100 worth of euros. You get some money exchanged. You used to have $100, but now you've got a number lower than 100 in euros. And then you're there, you're in France, wandering around Paris, and you suddenly realize that things cost more than you expected them to. So we now understand why there's a discrepancy, but why did early hard drive manufacturers start doing this? And why is it still happening today with smartphones, tablets, laptops, computers, and just everything in between. Quite simply, it's for marketing purposes, which means that they can make smaller drives whilst advertising bigger numbers. So this discrepancy that started out with hard drive manufacturers in their 50s, 60s, and 70s became commonplace and just ended up being deployed across many memory formats. For example, standard DVDs were advertised as having 4.7 gigabytes of memory when really they came in closer to 4.38. Weirdly, CDs actually advertised themselves as having the correct amount of space, but ended up using the incorrect measurement. So a CD would state that it had 650 or 700 megabytes of space, and it actually had that amount. But they were still stuck advertising the amount of space they had in megabytes, rather than megabytes. We even see this same situation today with RAM. Unlike the sizes for disk drives, RAM sizes have to be specified in powers of two. Therefore, four gigabytes of RAM is actually four gigabytes of RAM. Yet it's still advertised as four gigabytes. Okay, so with all of this in mind, would it not just be possible for hard drive manufacturers to create a true version of the memory? So for example, a one terabyte hard drive that is actually one terabyte. Maybe you could argue that creating new hard drives as per binary standards would create this discrepancy between all other forms where you would now have to take into account whether the hard drive is using old measurements or new measurements. So ultimately we're left in a position where there was a mistake in the way that memory was marketed by hard drive manufacturers. At some point we just accepted that binary kilobytes and decimal kilobytes aren't the same but pretended to treat them like so. This mistake made its way into the mainstream and has now been with us for so long that we can no longer undo the mistake. We could try to fix that mistake, but in turn it would create another. And in such situations, we've just opted to stay with the mistake that we know. And that's why that brand new smartphone of yours has less memory than what was advertised.